All right, super, super hot today. The truck is definitely smoking hot. We're just gonna have to sweat for a minute. Big day today, folks. Today we're gonna get a chance to do something that I've been hopeful of being able to do for a little bit of time now, and today we're gonna make it happen. We're getting ready to get up with Banky, but not only are we getting ready to get up with Banky, we're also doing a reunion today between Banky and Jew Man. These guys know each other from being in prison together. And it's crazy because when I first started talking with Banky, he said that the first video he saw was of Jew Man. And he knew Jew Man from serving time from back in the 90s. And in fact, it's been like since 90 something that these two guys have seen each other. But today, they're gonna be reconnecting for the first time in quite a few years. And I got a feeling that this is gonna be a pretty interesting an awesome day. So I don't want to waste a lot of time filming on this intro. I got to hurry up and get up with Banky. Jew Man's going to be meeting us over there. And I hope that this is something you guys are looking forward to seeing. I know I damn sure am looking forward to being able to put this together for you guys. So let's go see how all of this goes. All right. Just getting over here with Banky right now. And of course, they got to be cutting grass right next door. Well, they just stopped cutting grass. So hopefully they're almost done. But we're here with Banky, we're waiting on Jew Man, and Banky, look at you looking super fresh, uh, man. How y'all doing out there? I gotta get a mic on you because this is super quiet. Let me get this mic real quick. So I'm over here with Banky, I've been over here for a couple of minutes now. There go Banky right there, we got a microphone on Banky. Banky, say hello. Hey, how y'all doing out there? We can hear you. They got, uh, they're cutting some grass. And I had to start filming right now. Oh yeah, that's definitely him. I had to start filming right now because Jew Man just showed up. All right. Ah. What's yeah. happening? Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah. 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 So what? Yeah, I can't. Get your little car and hey, all that, bro. You. I'm here, man. I'm here. Hey, quit drinking. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah, 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 man. I'm good, man. That's you? Uh, yeah, that just, you know, 2020 Nissan, Jack. Man, but I, I just got me a, um, I just got a, uh, a Ford F-150 door. One of them big, Oh, yeah, or like one of his jokes. It's a little smaller than that don't deal. Oh, man, you looking good doing all right for yourself. Yeah, well, yeah, I got man, zero. I'm, I got these. Hey, man, shit. hey, hey, listen, man, you got it all, man. Yeah, yeah, you know I, mean? I got, got that freedom. You got Joe, oh, yeah. which is a winner, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You got Thank myself, you. Huh? man, I'm just out here, you know what I mean, but I help out here and there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you got a whole lot, bro. No doubt, no doubt. Ain't no question. Once you got that freedom, you got everything anyway. Like I say, I ain't tripping. As long as I'm out here, as long as I got my family, I'm good anyway. You yeah, know what I'm saying? that's right. Good that's to see right. you, boy. Good to see you too, man. Let me grab you something to drink, man. Joe, you all need right. something? Uh, yeah, I think a water, please. I got you, man. Yeah, I know it's a stove somewhere. That I got him in black, man. I ain't, I ain't him in black. It's uh, the Dollar General right Dollar there on the corner. Right yeah. there and they sell, uh, I'm pretty sure they got that. They got cigarettes in there, so I'm yeah. sure they got it. Ain't nothing about right down there. It's just right at the corner. Right. It's a, You'll see it right there to be on your left-hand side. Right. Hey, Jew Man, what's up, man? I can't call you, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got to blur that out. Yeah. Right so, uh. That right there, folks, the absolute real deal. First time reunion between Banky and Jew Man. These guys haven't seen each other since the 90s. When Jew Man gets back over here, we're gonna have a sit down, let these dudes chop it up. I'm sure they got a lot to talk about, and I'm honored to be able to bring you guys this major reunion. Two guys who haven't seen each other since the 90s. Both of these guys serving 30 years apiece. We're talking about a combined 60 plus years of prison experience and we're going to be talking with these guys momentarily and hearing just what they've got to say definitely looking forward to being able to bring this to you what's good what's it man all right so i'm gonna let you guys chop it up for a minute i'm gonna set everything up this uh, is going to be our filming spot right here all right Jew man definitely appreciate your time on a, on your day off yeah yeah you know um Hey man, I, I don't think I can get no better than this right here, right now. You know, the, um, this little reunion with Banky. You 
know. This shit ain't just somebody that I knew in prison. At one time, me and Banky, like, we was in the same pod. You know, so we was together every day. You know what I mean? We gambled together. You know what I mean? We ate together. You know. Hey, man. What more can I say, man? A real soldier right here. This ain't somebody that I just knew. This was a soldier right here. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. I was telling him, I was telling him, man, I remember. I remember all them days, man, when your name first came up, when I talked to you on the phone. Like I said, I remember all them days, man. Mm -hmm. I remember your sale partner. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I ain't call his name, but T TJ. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when well, you can call his name, yeah, they good dude. You yeah. know, is he out? Tyrone. Is he know, out? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, Tyrone he out? out. He got out, uh, I think. Tyrone got out around, I want to say around 2000, something like that. No. You talk to him? Nah, I haven't, man, I haven't seen him, talked to him, heard anything about him, and then, you know, like but right there in Virginia Beach somewhere. I like to see him. That, that dude was big. He was big as I don't know what time. He was big as I don't know what time. He was big like that. Like 22. Yeah, Jane. Yeah. What Jane yeah. talked to Jane? Nah, I ain't talked to Jane. Yeah. Let, me, uh, let me set this up real quick. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get this set up real quick. All right. But, uh, this joint right here, man, hmm. this is more than I could expect it. Less yeah. than a hundred days. Yeah, yeah. You already know the things we done seen and been yeah, through. Yeah, that's right. We that's right. Get out here. Yeah. I told him I don't complain about nothing. Mm -hmm. I take it in stride and keep it on pushing, man. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, it was times I ain't even know if I was gonna be out here. And see, the thing is, the thing is, man, you got to, uh, you got to do you. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You can't worry about what nobody else doing and you know what I mean? What anybody saying about what you doing. Right. You know what I mean? Because you got to, you, you know, man, you got to take control of your situation. Well, you know ain't no I mean? question. And you already know that anyway, Gus. Yeah, I man. always been. I always been alone. I ain't never been with no gang. I ain't never been with no tribe, no clique, no nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm by myself. So that's how I do. I think for myself. That's why I was just telling Joe earlier. Somebody could tell me something about this person. Somebody could tell me something about that person. Or boom, Joe this or or, or Jew made that. But I'm gonna decipher that for myself. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Cause right. what you may do to the next man, you may not do to me. That's right. What Joe That's may right. do to the next man, he may not do to me. Right. So your experience with Joe or, or your experience with Jew man ain't got to be my experience. That's right. See what I'm That's saying? Right. So. I, I take all that in stride, man. Okay. I don't let nobody poison me about somebody else That's because right. I don't want nobody to poison me to somebody else. That's right. See That's what I'm right. saying? That's Meet right. me, talk to me, and know who I am, and then you can make a decision on me. Hmm. But don't go by what somebody else say or go by some type of label that somebody done put on me. That's right. See what I'm that's saying? Right. Oh, he a convict. Oh, he locked up. Oh, he did this and that. So then that's all you see. That's right. But I'm that's more right. than that. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? And that's then you right. don't even know the story behind that. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, right. I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that, that's man. That's right. Because sometimes we forced into situations, man. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And we yeah. Just, and when you forced into something, you know what I mean? You you got to deal with it the best way you know how, yeah. you know what I mean? And other people may not like the way you're dealing with it, but hey, man, that's the best way or the best solution for yeah. me. If you, know? you if you know like I know, man, when you in that cage, that's what I tell people all the time. Or you got a problem with somebody out here in society, you could get away from you could avoid them. You could say, okay, I ain't going to deal with that. That's right. You in that cage, man, you ain't yeah. got but one or two options. That's right. You deal with that person or they're going to deal with you. Or they're going to deal with you. It's simple as that. Simple as that. And, and, you know right. what I'm saying? And people don't understand that. So that's why I say when they say, well, oh, you, well, why you do this? Or why you act so violent? Well, okay, what you want to, do, to happen to me? Hmm. You know what I'm hmm. saying? You want to happen yeah. to me? That's right. So it, you don't have a choice because the choice has already been made before you got there. That's it, right. This was happening way before I got in prison. Mm -hmm. They taught me this is what it's going to be. You either going to be with it or you not. Or you not. You see what I'm saying? And that's, that's right. just what it is. But you, and then, like I say, you know, coming in there anyway, like way back in them days right there, we were so young and everything. You see, we small anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was, telling, right. I was telling him, I said, man, when I come in, man, they had dudes, man. Yeah. Just like Ty. Yeah. You know Ty, what I'm saying? Yeah. Arms. Um, Everything. Uh, uh, arms bigger than your whole head. <laughs> Everything. You know? Yeah. Man, that man used to hang up on that. I remember he used to hang up on that pull up bar and tell dudes, hit him in the stomach. And as long as you want, hard as you want, and he ain't going to let go. And That's better right. do. And I ain't, see a, I ain't see a dude make him let go, period. Ever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? And I didn't hear right. it. 
That's you know what right. I'm saying? And he just be laughing, giggling. You know, hey, hey, hey. I said, man, that was crazy, man. Yeah, but you man. got dudes like that, man. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, those dudes in there working out, and those dudes working out, eating the food that we had to eat, right. and living under conditions we had to live under, and they were still prospering, still getting big still, and strong. And yeah. they was out here with all these supplements and, and diets, and they, yeah. them dudes would have, right. yeah, they would have right. been, yeah, world, world and see, champions. And, and see, the thing about um, that right there, being in there, you had that discipline, you yeah. know what I mean? You know, you could you could take your time and eat the way you want to eat and stuff like that. Even out here, you can eat the way you want to eat out here, but the discipline yeah. is not out here because you got so many other things going on in your life out here. Right. You ain't actually got time to get up first thing in the morning and go get your exercise in and stuff right, like right, that. Right. You know, because here, out here, you got to get up and go to work and this and that, or you got obligations, you know what I mean, you know, that you can, set up or whatever man you, you your life just going on out yeah. here and there you got thing you you got time to do little stuff yeah because everything everything in there everything in there is already drawn out for you right it's systematic the days is gonna go the same every day that's right it just you gonna have to get in the routine of what you're gonna do within that day but that the day gonna be the same right every day you wake up the same it's thing is gonna, gonna happen at the same time every day that's right so it's like groundhog day like the movie you know what i'm saying Every day the same thing happens. So thing happen. you just got to be prepared and know what you're gonna do. Well, once you get in your routine, and then it be hard for you to get out your routine. That's why I say if a dude get in the routine of working out, then that's what he gonna do. He gonna keep on working out. That's right. If you get in the routine of gambling or whatever, that's what he gonna keep on doing. That's See right. what I'm saying? Drinking wine, gambling. You know what I'm saying? Doing what you do, lifting that's weights, right. that's and right. that's what you do. But for the most part, you have a lot of dudes in prison, they be more in shape because like I say, they got so much idle time. Right. They ain't really right. got nothing to do. Right. So you work on yourself, you work on, on on your body. Plus dudes is working out too, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't never know what might come. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. dudes got to stay ready so they don't have to get ready. And so, then when I uh, first got out here, man, you know, people was telling me, man, say, my skin, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? I know they were telling you the yeah, same thing, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Your skin looks so rich, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and looks so smooth, so so clean, yeah. you know? And that's because, you know, in there, the main thing we had, you know what I mean? The main supplement we had was water. Right, you right, right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. You know, you had sodas and Kool-Aid and all those <laughs> stuff, but the main thing was, people, water, yeah. was water. Yeah. And a nice big old cup of coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I, seen, I seen a dude, uh, Oh, on the jump, my, my cousin called me. So there's a dude on there. I don't know what he got a blog or he got one of the uh, the things like Joe got or whatever. But I don't know. It's, 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 I think his name Mac Main or Main Mac or something. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about me in, right. in, in, in in this program, right? But he said on that joint, he said, "Yeah, my man, Banky coming out, man. He's 53, man. He looking younger than these dudes out here, man. Looking like mm. Sugar Ray Leonard and yeah, stuff. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So right. I'm like, boom. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, shout out to you, man. So uh, if he listening to man, shout out to you too. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I seen that, right? He said, mm. man, uh, get at me, man, if you can. Like I've been out here less than 100 days, man. Right. I ain't got no Facebook. I ain't got no Instagram. I ain't got none of that stuff. I'm getting ready to try to set it up. That's why right. I'm just telling Joe, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up because. The phone right now is, is you know what I'm saying? Right. Man, less than 100 days. Yeah. Man, yeah. this don't be bing, bing, bing. I be like, man, well, sometimes I just set it down. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, you know, um, I got a Facebook page, but I, I don't I don't really mess with it, you know, for real, for real, man. I try not to get caught up right. into all that little stuff, you know, because I, I try not to put too much of my business out there right. or whatever. But, it, for some people, man, it's good, you know what I mean, you know, because uh, you meet different people, right. you know what I mean, and it's, it's always good to network, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. you know, ain't nothing wrong with networking, yeah. man, you know, and that phone, man, that's 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 a, man, that's a key device, man, you know what I mean, you know, as far as, you know, you getting ahead, you yeah. need that phone, you know. Oh, I lost this joint the first, for the first time, um, about two days ago. I okay. lost it. Yeah, I lost the jump, right? And I was surprised at me losing the jump, how lost I was. Right. I ain't no now number. Mm -hmm. I was like, look, call, say, say, see if I can get it. It's what's the number? I ain't even know the number. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, it's already programmed. Right. So that right there in itself tells you that you got to stay on point because this right here teaches you not 
to 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 be prepared yourself because everything is already in here right. but see you need to know these things on cap in your head just like when we was in prison you need to know what's going on opposed to putting all your your hope and belief in a device right you got to you know what i'm saying know yourself now what, what if i didn't have this i ain't even know a number man i didn't mm. even know my brother number by heart because mm. it's in the phone right see what i'm saying so that was a wake-up call for me That's and right. it took me four hours to find this joke I need to learn them numbers and program them type of things in my head for a situation like that. Right, because, right. you know, like I say, coming from where we come from, you got to be prepared for everything, no matter okay. what. Okay. And speaking of that, you know, us coming from where we're coming from, let me see if you still got it. Yeah. Did you make this yourself? Yeah. <laughs> let me see if Banky still got it, y'all. I see told if, him. Let me see if Banky still got <laughs> that, that touch. Hey, look, I told that's that, that's put together, but I told him about making it, making it look. I told him. I'm gonna show them how to make this liquor. It's gonna be stronger than anything right here that they got out here. It'd be the same thing. He still got it. He, he still got it, but yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? On the only thing is now, dude drinking out here in the free world, man. You know what I'm saying? We ain't drinking no liquor out, no trash bag, yeah, yeah. no bucket, or hmm. trying to hide it and That's get right. away, man. That's, That's right. why I say, man. Ain't no complaints out here, man. I ain't yeah. got none, man. They said, what's going on, man? You all right? I said, ain't no question. That's right. I'm free. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Come on, man. Three decades of, of, of this, and then I'm out here with this for less than 100 days. I take the 100 days. Yeah. A dude told me something. We was talking, man, and it just came out, and I, I said, man, that's, that's so true, man. The greatest remedy in the world for a man incarcerated is freedom. Mm. Once you get freedom, everything you went through, everything that was was pressing on you in there, man, all it, it when, when somebody tell you that when you still in there, you say that's an impossibility. Right. That's right. an impossibility. Basically, man, when you get out, man, all that stuff going to subside, man. You ain't going to feel the way you feel, man. All the pressure, man, you be like, Shh, not all I went through. Nah, yeah. nah, that can't. That's right. You know that's what right. But when you get out here, man, and you get to be able, like me, I can, I can see my grandkids. Mm. And man, they, they go crazy when they see me. I'm That's telling them right. they won't even let me leave. Yeah. And I can see them, and I can see my kids, and I can, and I can see my mother and go talk to my mother every day and hug my I mother. Know, it's, it's man, man, come on, it's man. Beautiful. Come on, man. Beautiful. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, right. I ain't, I ain't tripping. Yeah. Believe that. All right. I want to jump in here a little bit. And if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you guys to talk a little bit about when you guys first met each other. What uh, year was it when you guys first met? And talk to us a little bit about some first encounters that you guys had and, and also about how you guys were doing your time together. Mm. <clears throat> I know I know when I first met you. I'm getting ready to hit you with something now that, uh, that, that, that you probably didn't even remember. When I first met you, I'm going to say, let me say the year probably was... Uh, I was already in the part when you moved in right. there. Right, but I'm going to tell you something. When I say what I say, it's going to jar your memory because you probably don't remember. I got a keen memory. Mm -hmm. But watch this. What did you say? What, what y'all first tried to start calling me? I told y'all my name was Banker, but what y'all, you and Ty them started trying to call me? Oh, probably was old. Lemon head or something. I don't know. Because you know, your head saying, shaped like old lemon head or lemon, <laughs> or lemon drop. When I say this, you gonna say Mo, that that let you know how keen my memory is. You remember, cause Ty started that joint, cause you shorter than me. But yeah. Ty, remember Ty started called midget. Midget. Oh yeah, yeah, midget. That's yeah, like yeah, you midget. see what I'm saying? And yeah. that joint had just started catching on for a while. I'm like, man, my name ain't making. But Ty had started calling for me a that long midget time for 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 a little yeah, minute. Yeah, you know, people was calling call me that joint. I'm like, yeah. man, go ahead, Ty. Ty started that joke. He said, man, go ahead, Mitch. Go ahead, Mitch. Mm -hmm. And man, cause you cause you was in there with him and you was shorter than him, then I'm shorter than him. So he felt like he was so tall, which he won't but a little bit taller than us. But he used to call me that, and that joke started catching on. And I'm like, man, they not gonna change in my fact, name in prison. You know what I'm saying? You remember what y'all used to call me? What y'all used to call me? I'm trying to think now. It won't you, man. It had shorter in it. Oh yeah, and I do, and it's on it's on my it, mind. And I got this, I got this uh, name from lifting weights up in there with Tyrone. Yeah, there. oh yeah, that was I, I was telling Joe then. I said, yeah. man, when I had seen, so I said, man, the Jew man was small, but he was you was you, you know what I'm saying? You was built up way back then. You was yeah. built up, cause I'm telling dudes back then, dudes don't realize, man, we in that penitentiary back then, man. Dudes doing hundreds and hundreds of push-ups a day. 
Yeah. You was going out there on that way pal every day. Push ups, man. I used to do 500,000 push ups a day. Shorty Rock back Shorty then. Shorty Rock. Shorty Rock. Shorty Rock. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's, that's right. right. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. We just call you Shorty Rock. And that joke carried on with you, too, because remember, I ran into you again. The next time I ran into you, I think we was on oh, Mecklenburg. Yo, Mecklenburg. Mecklenburg first. Yeah. Then Greensville. But I ran into okay. you on Mecklenburg. Then I ran into you on Greensville. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they was calling yeah, you Shorty Rock. Yeah, you was over Rock. there with uh, DC Hard and yeah, 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 DC yeah, yeah. Hard yeah. and all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all right. them. Yeah. That's right. That's how I was telling that Mecklenburg jump was off the chain, man. Yeah. But that's anybody was who's. Was you there when I, um, when I got into that thing with Cupcake them and you know what I mean? Uh, no, but I know. When I busted, you know, pulled and stabbed him in the back of the head. Cupcake. And, yeah. yeah, I won't dare then, but yeah. I, I know Cake stayed in a whole lot of junk. And he, they say, uh, you know, he passed away too. But you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with Joe and be honest with everybody. That's something that they put on me. And I, you know, it's like dudes, you know, uh, with women. You know what I mean? You ain't going to lie on your Johnson. You know what I mean? Man, I ain't, you know, people saying you hit that girl there, man. You did this and did that to that girl. You know, when I say hit, I mean, you know, you uh, had sexual encounter with her. You know, don't we just say hit you. You know, you hit that girl. Man, I hit that joke there or whatever. Now, when I say hit, I'm talking about stabbing, you know. Um, <clears throat> cupcake, you know, we had a little altercation. You know, and cupcake, real killer. You know what I mean? Yeah, no Don't course. let the name fool you or whatever this dude here got he actually you know, had a body yeah, in the he, system. yeah he had two bodies in the system yeah. you know what i mean you know and um this you know people with jack kind of leery of them and uh, whatnot but you know my thing was drinking so i got drunk one night you know and um you know and just called him and all the old little so-called killers in their pinky yeah i know them pinky too and i i bagged myself up inside a corner Inside a little empty cell, they had a little empty cell up in there. One with twelve, you know, on Mecklenburg back in that time, one with twelve people to a part. Yeah. Six in the top, six, six on the top, yeah. top, six down the bottom. And uh, Pinky and them was trying to tell Cupcake, because I guess Cupcake, he was the cell house gangster, you know what I mean, back then, in which, you know, he had every right, you know what I mean, to be that, yeah. you know what I mean, you know, being the type of dude he was. And uh, a lot of people were scared on you know, he used to run with one of my uncles back in the day. You know, you remember my uncles that was on, yeah, uh, on, on Augusta Gus. with us. Yeah. So I bagged myself in the corner, put an ace band around my hand, and had a, a, a five pound weight on the jump. And I told him, because Pinky then was telling him, saying, I told you, Kate, that's the problem right there. He the problem. When he moved up in here, I told you, man, you should have got rid of him then. So I was like, man, well, come on up in here and get rid of me. You know, come on, bring your ass. Bring, come on up in the cell, you know, get rid of me if I'm the problem. And wouldn't nobody come up in there. Yeah. Wouldn't nobody come up in there. So later on, uh, I guess about two nights after that, they found Cupcake stretched out on the floor. It's a whole store behind that, but he was in his cell stretched out on the floor. And he had two holes in the back of his head, you know what I mean, where somebody had been stabbed him in the back of the head. And being that me and him had had that, you know, a little altercation a couple of nights before then, they put it on me. Then it, 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 he was stabbed with a screwdriver. There's a long story behind how I ended up with the screwdriver. When they locked the pod down, they come, you know, find the weapon or whatever. They found it. I, I had got it and I put it inside a notebook that I had, you know. And they came in and searched my cell and they found it and they put that situation on me. But hey, man, I ain't do it. I ain't do it. You know, but crazy. that's just something that they put on me, you know. It's crazy that you mentioned that because Banky just shared a story with us about a similar situation happening to him at Mecklenburg where they put a weapon on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I, I was telling him, man, that by the time I got to Mecklenburg, man, I was probably like, yeah, about five, about five, six years in my in my in my sentence, right in my bed. So, uh -huh. them dudes was already playing chess. Them dudes was thinking thinking their way through prison. That's what that's what they had going for them. They was thinking their way through prison. 
I was thugging my way through prison. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm 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 going on with just you know what I'm saying, don't F with me and you ain't right. gotta worry about it. That's right. That's them right. dudes is thinking. So mm -hmm. they put the knife on me and got rid of me because they wanted me out to play. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I ain't know. So I'm thinking the police did it, but all the time it it it, it, it really took me like it's sad to say, but it took me a year or about a years to find out this is what really happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm still thinking, man, the police did this. They trying to get rid of me. They can't find nothing on me. They think I'm doing this, doing that, but I ain't doing this. So they said, okay, we gonna get rid of you. And they put a the knife in my side. Right. But all the time, it was the dudes. They was they they was already on, thinking on another level. Right. So right. you had to evolve into that from being just straight violent to, to using your brain. Right. See what I'm saying? Then when you get to the level of the part where you using your brain, you done move from violence to using your brain because the violence done already earned you mm -hmm. the reputation where ain't nobody gonna mess with you That's anyway. Right. That's so right. now you gotta start using your brain to think your way and navigate your way through this right. situation. Right. Then you got to take it from that level to using your experience to say, well, how am I gonna get out of prison? Because mm -hmm. I, ain't, I ain't trying to spend the rest of my life in here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How am I going to get out of here? So that's, that's, that, those are stages that you have to go through. But at the time when I was on Mettlenburg, I was unbeknownst to that. They, they, you know what I'm saying? They tricked me. You know what I'm saying? They tricked me and got me up off of it. Well, that's how I ended up at Greensville. Well, I'm going to tell you, you know, when, when we first met, you know what I mean, in that part, you know what I mean, M3. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, we that's at, on Augusta, M3. Yeah. And I think you had got that Rambo. What, 89? 89. 88, 89? It, it, it was 80, I think it was 80, it was either 88 or 89. You about right, yeah, about right in yeah. there. Yeah, you know, because you and T-Bone came up in there and the same time. Yeah, and you know I, mean? I ended up, uh, and I know where he at, I ended up talking to him uh, since I've been out. Yeah. Yeah, he up there and there, I talked yeah, to him Yeah, and last I heard, he was married, doing good yeah, he and is, everything. Yeah, he is, he is. But when you first came in the park and we was calling you Midget and everything, yeah. you know, because like I say, like you said, Tyrone, you know what I mean, threw that right, name right. out there and that's what, that's what we was calling you. Here it is, I'm thinking, okay, well, we got another workout partner. Bank is going to be with us working out, you know what I mean? But, man, you won't even in the park a hot week and then before you started messing around, Man, you started messing around with, you know what I mean, them dudes. I mean, they need real, real dudes, man. You know what I mean? You know, killers. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And I'm speaking about, you know what I mean, Chucky, Watson, yeah, yeah. and all them dudes, all these old heads. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, man, what is this dude doing, you know, messing with these dudes, man? You right. know what I mean? He supposed to be with us working out. and But you, I mean, you got up in that joke, man. You started gambling. You started, you know what I mean, doing, you know, doing your little thing, you know? Yeah, gambling, man. I I, I told I, I was telling my people, man. I had got into that, and I man, I gambled, man. Probably for about, man. I got to say at least twenty years. Mm -hmm. That poker and, and, and skin and all of that stuff, man. And doing that job every fact, day. I can still remember you messed around and got late with that gambling joint one time. And man, you know, the talk ran the pod with like, man, that thank you, man, that nigga old, man, that nigga old such and such and such and such. But hey, a few days later, boy, you had that joke paid off and everything. I oh, say, yeah. God damn what that. That's how the gambling flips though. You know what I'm saying? It, you could be there in the day, then you be up tomorrow. I wouldn't advise to nobody because like I say, along with that is the drama. Mm -hmm. Along with that is the violence. Along with that is the physical or the case. Those are gonna come with. That's a guarantee. Right. See what I'm saying? But it's so addictive that it, it don't get to the point where okay, yeah, you want the money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's also the adrenaline rush. You sitting in there and it gives you something to do. Right. All day that's long, right. you that's down right. there. You know what I'm saying? Because this is something that somebody want to do all day, mm -hmm. and then you intrigued by it, and you you always you know what I'm saying on point because. This is something that's gonna get you some money and it's gonna get you, you know what I'm saying, to be comfortable in there. So it ain't like you something doing just to pass time. It's something serious. So your adrenaline is always flowing. You always with it. So yeah, I got caught up in that zone, man. And uh I mean it took care of me for a long time, yeah, for real. You know what right. I'm saying? I that's had right. I, I, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I made I made plenty of money off of gambling. Can and I, I jump in here real quick? Yes, yeah. sir. With what you man's talking about about you going in the hole. Yeah, you know how bad were you down that time? Oh man, I'd have been down. I'd have been down plenty of times. I'd have mm -hmm. been down, man. It's it's a thing called uh, huh. 
uh, I'm trying to put it in the politically correct way. What they call in there where you uh where you know what I'm saying, you just betting on air. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I done went to the poker table. I ain't got a dime in there. Snatching ass. Yeah. 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 I'm, <laughs> All of that. Yeah. yeah. Real talk. Yeah. Real talk now. You know, he was down. Banker was down yeah. something like three, four hundred dollars. But Banker was one of them dudes, man. His, you know, like, you know, his people looked out for him. You know what I mean? And, you know, and during that time in 89, you know, you was not everybody in you know in prison during that time could afford because you can get your own clothes at the time sent from the street. You know, sent from home and everything. Well, yeah. Banker was one of them dudes that he came in. He was still he was dressing like I still remember them Tims you had. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, ain't too many Banker, dudes had Tims yeah, back then. Yeah, ain't too then. many dudes had Tims. I had Tim. the big, uh, the big, uh, the, the, yeah, uh, them jokes came Tim. up yeah. to yeah. That's that DC flavor. Yeah, yeah, that's that DC flavor. And then, you know he walked around with his jean jacket on. Couldn't everybody couldn't afford a jean yeah. jacket at the time? And, you know and, what I mean. And, and they say, it might sound crazy to people out there, but but back then jean jacket in prison, you yeah you had it going on. You yeah, know what you had it going on. Yeah. You, man, you had your jean jacket, jean you know? jacket, your Timberland, your jean yeah. boots, and, and all this came, and the third. Banker came through the door wearing this stuff, yeah. you know. So when you went down, you know what I mean, man. I, I know it had to been about three, four hundred dollars yeah. that you was down, and that was the talk around the park. I don't know if you heard it or not. Whatever, everybody was like, man, he owed such and such, you know this, and he owed such and such that. But man, yeah, them a few days later, though, boy, you had that stuff oh, yeah. paid off and. See, you're doing good there, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then you open up the little stove box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, yeah, I ended up. I uh, remember that. And that's another thing too, as well. I ended up doing that stove box thing too for too long. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because you know, like I know, that caused drama too. Yeah. But man, I ended up running the stove box, man, for probably about twenty some years too. Mm -hmm. Twenty some years, man. For people who don't know. I mean, we've talked about it quite a bit here on the channel, but what exactly was the store box? This was your hustle. Oh, it. yeah, yeah. Store box is like, uh, you come get this soda from me because I got it and I give it to you, but you got to bring me 100% interest back. You got to bring me two of them back. I get to you as single, they come back as twins. Hmm. You know, that's how mm -hmm. it's going. It's, that's right. That's, that's, that's the way it is. And you that's know, right. You know, they call it loan shock and they call it this, that, or the third, but whatever it is, it's, it's, it's supply and demand. If you got it and somebody else is going to need it, then you got to try to, you know, make that benefit you. So if somebody come get two things from you, they bring you four back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they come get five, they bring ten back. If they need it that bad, that's what they're going to do. But when they come and, and get it from you, they already understand that these, these are the rules and regulations. They already know that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing about it is this. You have to have enough respect to run a store box. Mm -hmm. Where dude know mm -hmm. that you gonna run that store box with an iron fist. Mm -hmm. You gonna run it with an iron fist. So if, 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 it, if they don't pay you, then they know it's consequences. Yeah. Now, if you a dude to run a store box and don't nobody respect you or whatever, then you can open up a store box today, you'll be broke tomorrow because ain't nobody going to give you nothing. That's right, because then you had dudes you had dudes like myself, man, if you had a store box, you know what I mean, and you won't respect it enough the way people paid you your stuff back or whatever, you had dudes like myself that was coming to get that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I'm going to get about $50, $60 worth of stuff and I ain't going to pay it back, you know. And you going to either give it to me or I will be back, you know, and I'm going to have something in my hand when I come. Back then, that respect thing was real, real deep, man, you know. And like I say, <clears throat> I don't want to get people, you know, on uh, the wrong impression when I speak about homeboys or this or that. You know, it ain't no gang thing, you know, because them gangs won't out there like that, like it is today. When I say homeboys, I'm talking about, I'm from Tidewater, banking from up D.C., anybody up that way, them his homeboys. You know, anybody down here in Tidewater, them my homeboys, you know. Now, me and banking cool, you know what I mean? We was cool from day one. But if Tidewater got a beef with D.C., he got to roll with his homeboys, I got to roll with mine, you know what I mean? 
And it ain't no thing to where it's, man, we ain't friends no more, we ain't this and that. It's just, it's, you know, I respect them enough to know, hey, man, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? You got to roll with your homeboy. You know what I mean? If not, then your homeboys going to cut you off. Not saying that you can't stand up on your own without your homeboys or whatever. It's just a thing to where it's, man, you know, that's what it was. If you ain't, if your, home, your own homeboys ain't respecting you, then what make you think I'm going to respect you? You know what I mean? You know, so back then, it was a, a geographical thing, you know. Richmond rolled with Richmond, D.C. rolled with D.C., Tidewater rolled with Tidewater. But even though all of us, you know, was friends and, in a, in, you know what I mean, mingled with each other, when them beefs start like that, when them beefs start, man, you got you to gotta man up and roll and ride with your homeboys and dudes from other locations, geographical locations, you know, they, they respected that. They didn't respect it if you didn't ride with your homeboys. You know what I mean? But see, in, in, in there, when I, like, coming through during that time like that, it, 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 was, it was more so, more or less just like that. You know what I'm saying? But D.C., being the weed, was always a smaller minority because, like I say, that ain't, that ain't Virginia. You know what I'm saying? So we was always small in numbers. But we was always large and hot, mm -hmm. cause they already knew. I don't care who you talk to, Tidewater, Richmond, whoever. They already knew if they was dealing with anybody from DC, they was we coming all the way out. We going all the way out. Y'all you know were the saying? boxers. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, and, yeah, everybody and getting from that DC. Ring. Yeah, yeah. You everybody know, from DC knew how to use right. them hands, man. You know. Right, and yeah. we coming from the mentality because, like most of the dudes, it was from there. If either they had been in Lawton, or they had some family that had been in Lawton. So when you done been in Lord, or you had some family that been in Lord, and your whole mentality is different. Mm. Because you talking about them dudes in there is killing. They ain't mm -hmm. playing. See mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They, they, they killing. So if you feel like you gonna get killed, if you don't kill, then what? you tell me what your options are. Mm -hmm. You don't have no options. That's it's right. either or. So that's the type of mentality a lot of dudes had from D.C. because we also know we was outnumbered. Hmm. And as you can remember, we had the little ride one time while I was there. I don't know if you was going or not, but we had the ride one time with DC and Rich mm -hmm. when the junk jumped off with Block and all up. Okay, you see okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. so yeah, so yeah, so that was that was that was some serious that was some serious stuff right there. You know That's what I'm saying? Right. A lot of dudes got hurt. A lot of dudes got you know what I'm saying stabbed up or whatnot. And the numbers were so disproportionate, but at the same time, DC still held their own. That's Cause right. Cause you talking about. <laughs> Man, you might be talking about 150, 200 dudes against 20. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But that's just the odds of. But I will say this without a shadow of a doubt, and he probably, he he can tell you this, he can attest to this. One thing about them Richmond dudes and them Tidewater dudes in that prison, I don't care what they was doing on the street. They might not have got along on the street or whatever. But if you you mess with one of them in there, especially in them 80s, mm -hmm. oh yeah, mm -hmm. you you got to deal, yeah, right. deal with the whole mob. Yeah, you got to deal with the whole mob, the whole Tidewater mob. You mess with a dude from Tidewater that was known, and he got beef with somebody that, that was serious, that the beef was real. Man, you 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 got a whole mob to deal with, and vice versa with Richmond. You got a whole mob to deal with. You know That's what I'm right. saying? So it, right. it, those were the times we were living in back then. But like I say. You just got to pick and choose your battles. You got to stand firm on your own two feet and say, when it go down, this is how going down, and whatever happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe in that, then it ain't no need, it ain't nothing else for you to do besides check in. Hmm. Them mm -hmm. days when we came in, man, that zone, that zone was so real and raw. But like what I tell dudes, though, you won't even realize, man, what you come through till you out of it. Till you out of it. Till you That's out right. of it. You don't That's even right. realize. When you look back at this, now, even like when I say, when I talk about stuff like when I be talking with Joe uh somebody asked me today before I got here they said what you gonna talk about today what y'all talking about today and I said I don't know I said you don't never know what you're gonna talk about I said nah hmm. I said Joe asked me about a time period and I just started talking mm -hmm. so they say you just start talking just out the top of your head I said I got so many memories mm -hmm. that I just started talking if he mm -hmm. say what was going on when you was at uh, Augusta? What was going on when you was at? 
It just comes in my head. That's right. So they were so shocked and surprised that the, the videos that I have made already, that I didn't have that already pre-planned. Mm -hmm. They said, you just talked about that as, yeah. yeah. When you done see, it's like in your brain. It's like nothing to me because I, right. I actually lived it. It's nothing. It's just like whatever you did yesterday, if somebody asked you what you do yesterday, it's going to pop right up in your brain. Mm -hmm. That's how it is when, with these 33 years that I did. It's already in my brain. It ain't nothing that I got to rehearse. It ain't nothing that I got to discuss. That's I already right. know it. It's That's just like this is the first time That's I'm right. seeing you probably since the last time I seen you probably was. Uh, we was on Greenville. Greensville was it. And I left Greenville. I left Greenville in 96. I don't know if you were still there. I, yeah, yeah, I left in 98. I left in 98. When okay. The same thing when they had the D.C. ride against Richmond right. and dude got killed. Okay, okay. I left then. Dude got dude lost his life in that ride, and that's a whole different ride. Yeah. I left in '98 then, but so you left in '96. Mm -hmm. So I w I was there that time from um, I was there that time from '93 all the way until '98. Right. So yeah, I left in '98 from that ride right there. Okay. What and year? See, what year? Uh, excuse mm -hmm. me, Jim, man. What year did you guys first meet? Do you remember that? It, it had to right be about '89. Yeah, it's '89 or '88. Either or, it's one of the two. Yeah. Most definitely, it's 88 or 89. That's so you right. were just starting your prison sentence. Right. Mm -hmm. I was just starting. And, and you, man, you were pretty much just starting yours as well, right? I, I was pretty much just starting mine as well. Yeah. You know? I, yeah, yeah, I got there. I got it on. just so happened that I, I got there in June of 88. You know, I got on the gusts of June 88. I had already had a brother and two uncles there, you know. And, um... Like I say, my transition, you know, of, 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 you know, coming from jail and receiving to prison, you know, was pretty much kind of easy because I already had a brother and two uncles there, you know, so it kind of, um, it kind of made my little, you know, transition, you know, a little smoother than others because during that time, they'll put you in, the, they'll put you in the park or put you out there on the yard and just let you go for yourself. Mm -hmm. You either going, you know, stay in the, in the pod, in the building, and do your bit like that, or you going out on the yard, and you going, you know, get into the mix of things. You going to start your bit. You know what I mean? You can't start your bit. You hanging up in the building all day. You know what I mean? Because now you ain't scrambling, you ain't hustling, you ain't doing nothing, you know. And if you just want them dudes to stand up in the building all day, you know, living off your people or whatever, then you can become a target. You know what I mean? But people gonna start wondering what's going on with you. You know, man, this dude don't never go outside. You know what I mean? With it, you know what I mean? Don't nobody know him. You know, he ain't got no rep, he ain't got no reputation, you know, to the point to where people like, man, don't don't mess with him. You know, so you can become a target if you don't go out there on the yard, you know what I mean, and make yourself known. Now, I ain't saying you got to go out on the yard and bust nobody in the head and them, but just go out there and, you know, let people, you know, get the feel of you. You know what I mean? It's hard for people to really understand, and I, I, they probably never going to understand, you know what I'm saying? Because it's mm -hmm. something, like I say, certain things got to be experienced to be understood. And um, you ain't going to really never be able to, to, to express what goes on inside them prison walls, man. You, you, you just not going to be able to do because it. Because it's so much... It's just like a, a college, a college campus or a university or something, man. You know, because, and I say that because, you know, on a college campus or a university, man, you have, you have different people from all walks of life, man. You know what I mean? In, yeah. in, you know, on a college campus, you know what I mean? Or, you know, university. You got people from all around the world. Right. You know, at them Jones, and that's what prison is. You got people from all walks of life, man. You know what I mean? In prison. Yeah, but you know? the difference is, that's what I say, too, when you got that in prison, but the difference is also, too, they forced to be together. Yeah, they it's forced not by to choice. be together. You that's forced right. to be together. They can put you in a cell with somebody today that you detest, that you hate with all your guts, mm -hmm. but you ain't mm -hmm. got no choice but to stay in there with them or either penalize yourself. That's, that's right. That's it. That's the only choice you that's got. That's right. And that's what I be telling people, too, about... Like out here, if you got a beef with a dude, or you got a beef with a click, or you got a beef with, you stay away from them. Right. You that's can't right. do that in prison. That's right. There's that's no. Right. That's not even an option. You gonna be out there, and it's it's so small. The environment is so small that 
you got to either deal with that problem or that problem gonna deal with you. Yeah. And and, and that's just it. It's simple as that. So that's right. Once you be in there for so long and then you start living like that, because don't nobody come in prison living like that. That's right. Because that's, right. that's a crazy mentality. You know, that's why y'all think of it and y'all hear it and y'all say that's crazy. These people actually live. No one comes in there living like that. But once you get in there and you start living like that, mm -hmm. it becomes normal to you. When you sitting there like we sitting there here talking right, right now, like right. you, you and me probably been in this situation a thousand times in prison mm -hmm. at least. And we sitting here talking, and then right there, all of a sudden, you hear a ruckus, and you look over, somebody getting stabbed. That's right. Somebody getting the head bust over. Yeah. Somebody getting crushed, or somebody done grabbed the police and start fighting the police. Hmm. And in normal society, when you see that, and you at a restaurant or something, something like that happen, everybody get up and everybody panic or whatever. But you become so immune to that in prison because it's, it happens so often that if something like that happened, I literally got to the point where I'd be like, and I just turn around and keep doing what I'm doing. That's right. Because I already done seen it a thousand times. That's right. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't overdose on it. It's, yeah. it's normal to me. And you can't, you can't jump up. Yeah, because you, then it look like you with it. Yeah, you know what I mean. You you can't jump up, <laughs> or and, and and run to go get the police or do none of that because people gonna start laboring you as a snitch and then you oh, gonna a become fact. a target. Oh, that's you know a what fact. I mean. Yeah. So you got to. Once you see it, you got to go ahead on and continue. You know, you got to see and don't see, hear and don't hear. Yeah. You got to go ahead. Like if you eating, we in the dining hall, we in the chat hall somewhere, we eat, and a fight break out right here, dude start stabbing somebody or whatever. You can't get up and and, and do all that old stuff there. You, nah, you just got to go ahead on and mind yeah. your business. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was the thing back then, man. You know, mind your business, man. I just had that conversation with three different people in my life. Mm three different people in my life and I know if y'all listening to this I'm not trying to offend y'all now but y'all know who y'all because I just had this conversation but it's so now like when you out here now and somebody mm -hmm. call you this is the first thing they say where you at mm -hmm. what you doing mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and you and I both know that ain't even what you do in prison that's right you see what I'm saying because right. that makes a person feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. when you say where you at what you doing because Coming from the life that I just came from, that's just unacceptable. Because when you ask those type of questions, people are looking at you like, well, what you want to know all that information for? Or what mm -hmm. are you trying to do? That's you know right. what I'm saying? With that's that right. information. So out here, they say it's normal. But what I'm trying to make people understand that where I just came from is not normal. Mm -hmm. So they say, well, you're not in there no more. But I was in there for three decades. I only been out here for less than 100 days. So mm -hmm. how do I transition and make that like, this is normal to me, because you say it's normal. No, then, that's a process. Yeah, that's a process. That's a process. You know what I'm saying? And right now, I have several people in my life that calls, and the first thing out of their mouth is not, okay, well, where you at? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it throws me back for a little bit, but the people who I know who are doing it are doing it out of love and concern, so I understand. But at the same time, I still have to check myself because I'm not used to that. Like my girl... Her and her daughters tell me all the time, man, you, you know, you, you know, she'll say, babe, you, you, you institutionalized. You need to let some of that stuff go or whatever. It ain't good to let some of that stuff go. Some of that stuff is good to keep with you, man, because in there, it ain't all bad. You know what I mean? Because it teaches you discipline in there. Uh, it teaches you respect, you know. Now, that respect and that discipline, you know, both of us, been, you know, been in there over three decades. That respect and that discipline that became a part of us now, you know, and it's a it's a good respect. It's a good discipline to have about yourself. Those are good things to have with you, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, those are good principles, man, to have, yeah. you know, about yourself. I, I would just reword what you said when you said. It's some good. It, it ain't all bad in there. It's good in there. Yeah. I would reword that. I agree, but because I disagree. Because you meet, you, we, we, right. we meet good people in there. Not everybody it's bad. Yeah. It's, but, but, but the situation and, and, and the conditions is definitely all bad. I don't mm -hmm. want to get okay. that to get yeah. misconstrued. Right, right, right. It's right. all bad. Don't That's get right. that misconstrued. You just have to grab some good out of it. That's You're right. You're going to meet good people. You're going to meet knowledgeable people. And see, like I said, when I went in, I was young. So, you know, I was naive, I was green. 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? I ain't understand a whole lot of things about life, period. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. knowledge that if, it, if anyone feels like I have some knowledge or I have some wisdom, which I certainly feel like I do, mm -hmm. but it all comes from inside of it. Mm -hmm. But it started with listening to older guys, paying attention, taking heed, not just letting the words go in one ear and out the other. Every time I heard something profound, I locked it in my brain. Every mm -hmm. time I read something profound, I locked it in my brain. So when it came a point in time where that, that situation or circumstance that was pertaining to that popped up in my life, I had a recall of what I read. Mm -hmm. I had a recall of what I heard. That's right. And I applied it. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So that's how you gain knowledge and that's how you gain wisdom. Because mm -hmm. you got to listen to See, a lot of people don't want to listen because they think when somebody tell them something that they superior to them mm -hmm. or they trying mm -hmm. to belittle them or mm -hmm. they trying to make you feel smaller than them. That mm. ain't got to be the case. And mm. even if it is the case, so what? Take what it from you what, what you can get from it. That's take right. out of it what you can get out of it and use it to your benefit. That's right. Ta you, you can take out of what an arrogant person tell you. You can take the wisdom out of it and take them to take the arrogance and take it on with them. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't even got to pay attention to that part. Yeah. You just pay attention to what you can get out of it and what you benefit from yourself. And that's what I learned in prison was to take something from everything but take the best part. That's right. And I leave the rest of it on the, on the plate. I don't That's even right. eat that. I leave that on the plate. That's right. You know? Because if you saying something to me, if we having a conversation and you saying something to me and I start feeling like, you know, uh, or I start feeling inferior or that you belittling me in some form or fashion or whatever, instead of me, you know, feeding the negative aspect of that, I should be embracing that little feeling you know what I mean whether it's inferior or what you know because that's some if I embrace it then that mean I'm gonna do something about it to stop right. myself from feeling like that right. you know what I mean because you haven't done anything wrong you speaking truth about whatever the situation is for me to start feeling inferior then that's a problem I need to work on within myself absolutely you know what I mean absolutely. so I say embrace that but I want to go back for a minute and talk about when we were speaking about them beefs, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, Richmond and DC yeah. or DC and uh, Tidewater. Well, what I did like about that area was this if Tidewater and DC were beefing with each other, man, the respect thing was so deep and so high, you know, during that time period that you had old heads, man, that if an old head stepped in, and just the old head could just be in his cell, you know, in the building all day or whatever. But he got that type of respect to say, look, that's dead. I don't want to hear nothing else about it. That's what it was. You know, because, you know, you got old head, oh, yeah. old head, yeah. and old head's going to break you off. You know what I mean? What, what you mean is dead? Listen, youngin, you're going to get a whole lot of people hurt. And what you doing and the thing, you know, the way you going about it, man. Y'all go out here on this yard and y'all stab each other up or whatever. It's a whole lot of good people that's going to get hurt in that situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? They really don't have nothing to do with it. But the fact that you there homeboy and they going, you know what I mean? The thing was, you, you know, most times you going to ride with your homeboys. You got to, you know. And when an old head say it's dead, it's dead, man. You ain't got to say nothing else. You know what I mean? That old head probably holler at an old head. This old head from Tidewater, you know, probably send word to this old head in D.C. and be like, man, yeah, that's, that's dead. Yeah. So the youngins that's out there wilding out, you either going to dead it, you know what I mean, let it go, or sooner or later, you going to get dealt with. You going against a cold, man, a penitentiary cold. Old head said it's dead, and you still went out there on your own then hey you got a lot of people hurt a lot of people stabbed up so now you gonna get dealt with i don't i don't know how you may get dealt with but you gonna get dealt with man yeah you're 31 right yeah 31. yeah when you been in there man for as long as we was in there you could see the transition you could see the transition in prison man from when we came in there to what it is today i seen the whole transition i seen it as it went down you know step by step and, and it started with a process of them trying to, the, the first time I remember the, it, it getting it to the point where the prison was really changing mm -hmm. was when they came with that control movement. 
Right, right. When they started coming with that control movement. 94, 95. Right. That's when they yeah. had the ride on Greensville. I was there for that ride yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, matter of fact, it was 1994, September, September 19th. September, because it was just after the family day. Yeah. Now, the dates, yeah. I'm not good with. But mm -hmm. the time, I can always remember them. It's, it's just so locked in my brain. But I can remember when that was the process right there when the whole prison system started to change. That's when it started to change because once they came... And that's what it was behind. The control move. The whole ride thing yeah, was Yeah, it was a control that, move. Um, now, see, now, I, now, I just want to make this point before I say this or whatever. Like I was speaking about the old heads, when the old heads say a situation is dead, it's dead. You know, they, they, they have... You know, like Charles Carter, yeah. people like that. You know what I mean? They say something dead is dead. You know what I mean? Now, Bo Billy. You know what I mean? Bo Billy tell you, man, young and that joint dead. What you you gonna go against Bo Billy? You can go against some, if he just right. said it's dead. And this dude then been through Lord. They didn't even send this dude to what Mexico, everything trying to kill him. They sent him out of state. And everywhere they sent him, he got a body. And they sent him right back. So a dude like that tell you, young, and don't go out there and do this and do that because you're going to get a lot of people hurt that joint dead. You mean tell me you still going to go out there and do that? Nah, I don't think so. All right, then the reason I brought that back up is to say this right here. While we talking, I feel as though both of us didn't have enough respect up in there to call certain names, all right? You know what I mean? We, you know, like... Um, whatever the situation is, you, you know, when we first, when I first came up, you said you ain't gonna call no name. You yeah, say, yeah, yeah. You know, only reason TJ. I say I'm not gonna call their name because I don't know what they got going on. I don't know what they what, what they got going on in their life, what they doing or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They right. could be in a whole different situation, or they could just not want their name brought up. But right. at the same time, I ain't calling their name out, or or, or, or even would have you call their name out in a negative light. Right. But at the same right. time. You, I don't know what they got going on, so out of respect, right. I just don't call their name. But these names in prison, like the ones that you just called out, they well known names. Well you see known what I'm names. That's and right. Some of them probably ain't ain't like 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 probably don't even get out of prison because they so well known. But two of them you call out, like Charles Charles out. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So, but when you say these type of names, these dudes and put in so much work, man, in that prison, they, they, yeah, their name ring bells, and you know what I'm saying? They got that type of respect. You see what I'm saying? And like I say, as time went on, I got that type of respect. That's right. But That's at right. the same time, it's it's bittersweet because, like I say, along goes with that. That's what I be telling dudes. When you in prison like that and you say, okay, well, well, they know that bank will do this or bank will do that. Okay, so they may not mess with you, but you got the flip side as well. Mm -hmm. You also got the side where they know that bank will do this and bank will do that. If they got a problem with bank, they coming with deadly force. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? They not coming with nothing less than that, or they not coming at all. That's right. So that's, that's the right. flip side to that. Them days back then, man, it was them some uh them was some learning days, man. Yeah. But they was uh they was some good days too, man, because like I say, a lot of knowledge came out of them days. A lot of a lot of them days right there set the foundation for what was to come. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? Because right. for real for real we were so young then we were living off of off a of, uh, 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 drilling and living off of or uh, right. just you know brave heart. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we were green. Man, won't know what's happening. Yeah. You could be. You could could have easily died on any one of them days. Yeah. Any because, one Monday, because, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, you could have died. But because you won't there, even thinking like that. Because in there, you can't just bump up into some. You know, bump up into somebody without saying excuse me or oh, yeah. step on somebody's feet. By mistake and without saying man, back then you couldn't even you, look at a dude wrong. Yeah, because you gon' you you know you gonna have a confrontation. Man. You know, out here, you can bump somebody. You can be in a store, bump somebody, and excuse me. You know what I mean? And they fine. You know, you know you all right. But up in there, you bump into somebody, you step on somebody's shoe by accident or whatever. Man, it's gonna man. It, that joke can turn into a whole. Yeah, different situation, and see, man. And I see right, I see now, right. Like I say, I, I feel, you know, I ain't been out here a hundred days, but you know, I feel like I got, you know, good common sense and, and whatnot. But at the same time, like I say, I'm a realist, mm -hmm. so I know like people in my life say little things like, "Well, are you worried about this too much? Or are you too paranoid? Or 
da da da. You 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 know what I'm saying? You overthinking things, mm -hmm. but I try to un make them understand. That's the only way I know. You right, see what I'm saying? Right. Something small, or if I see something looks suspicious, I'm more in tune with it than they is. That's right. See what I'm saying? That's or when right. people walk behind me, I turn around. Now I don't know if that's a form of PTSD or not. I don't know because mm -hmm. I, I I don't know. You know what I'm saying? What that you know details? What's right. all involved in it? But I do know. It, it just seems like to me it's an impossibility to be in a situation for three decades right. and not be affected by it somehow. Right. I would right. like to think I'm not affected enough where it is to, it hinders me, you know what I'm saying, out here in society. But to say you're not affected at all, that's that's crazy. Yeah, it, it yeah, is that's crazy. crazy. You know, now, you know, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't watch somebody that didn't, you know, I'm going to just say that we didn't learn enough in prison to, to by the time this guy then walk behind you, we didn't learn how to read everything about that dude by the time he get from this point. Oh, yeah. You know, from the front of you to the back of you. You done already seen, you know what I mean? You've been trained, prison and trained you to then look at him, look at his hands, look at his, his, his waist. You know what I mean? With his, that's his waist that's where the whatever. situation just came and you from. And you didn't uh, analyze everything about this dude before he actually got behind you. So you know whether he's a threat or not. But you know see, what I mean? right now, out here in society, what I noticed, this is what brought this conversation up with, with me and my brother the other day. Because a dude was walking by us, and you know when I say what I'm getting ready to say, that this is a no-no in prison. He walking by, but he walking towards us, but he got his hands in his pants. Oh, yeah. So I, I I don't know what he doing. So he talking mm -hmm. to me, and I'm looking at this cat approaching, and he's saying, what, what, and I'm like, this dude, walk, he like, man, that dude ain't thinking about you. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about him. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I'm That's thinking right. about him till he get past me to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But he literally walked right by me with his pants all the way, his hand all the way in his pants, as if to, in my mind, you could have a knife, you could have a gun or whatever, and then when you get right next to me, you can make your move. Because that's, right. that's how it go down that's in right. there. That's so right. I watched this cat the whole time he walked right on by me, and sure enough, he went on about his business. Right. But in my mind, I'm like, he get ready to get the business. Because mm -hmm. I don't know what you get ready to do, but I'm ready. That's so right. It, and, and that form of thinking is right now the stuff you got to transition out of. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you I know. know I will and at the same time, but at the same time, I don't feel like that hinders me. I feel like if anything else, it makes me more in tune with what's going on around me. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But to him, he like, man, you trip. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I'm like, okay, well, what if it was what I thought it was? Now, now certain parts, you know, out here, I ain't, well, I'm not even going to really say certain parts. You know what I mean? Out here. It's out here, period. You still have to be aware because you have yeah. people out here that's just that gone, just that crazy yeah. that they you, would actually the news do something the crazy. The news will tell you that. Yeah, I'm hoping that, you know, like I say, I can transition more and more as the days go by from there. But right now, everybody walk by me, man. I I, I look at them with a funny eye, man. Until right. I can right. decipher what's going on with them. And, right. and to me, it doesn't even matter if it's male or female because yeah. I'm just that's just how I'm geared. And see, can't nobody tell you can't nobody tell you, not me, not Joe, not who, not your family members, nobody. Can't nobody tell you when it's time for you to let certain things right. go. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you got to let them things go when you feel comfortable sure. enough to let your guys down like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Let me jump in here real quick. I want to get to wrapping this up, but... You know, what is it like for you two to see each other again after so many years? Since mm. the late 90s was the last time that you guys saw each other, and you both pretty much started your prison bids off together, right. serving damn near the same amount of time. Jew man, you served 31 years. Uh, Banky serving 33 years. You know, what's it like for you two to reconnect? Well, I'm going to say this. You know, the way he came in, you know, I always knew that, you know, banking, you know, was going to do good. You know what I mean? I, I already knew he came from a good background and everything, you know, based on how he came in there. So it was no doubt in my mind that, you know, 
if I was to ever see Banker out here or whatever, that he wouldn't be doing, you know, well. You know, I knew I wasn't going to see Banker like I've seen a few dudes out here, you know, that just run down. They own drugs. They, you know, they, they just look bad, man. You know, they're not working in the well. You know, well, I never envisioned Banky being like that, you know, because of who he was in prison, you know, the way he came in prison, the way I met him. So, you know, to actually see Banky out here right now, I, I, I expected to see Banky just the way Banky is, man, you know, doing, Banky doing well, man, you know. With his head up, looking good, man. Boy, you look good. You look like you've been working out or yeah, something. Yeah, got to work out. That keeps yeah. you alive, man. But ain't the same thing, you know what I'm saying? I, I I know dudes that when they come out or when they get out or you heard they get out, you you, you have certain expectations of them or you think, well, I know what he going to do. I know what he going to do. But some some dudes you know, you can see it in them. You can know that they drive, they going to be okay. Right. But all they need is an opportunity. But a lot of times dudes don't get an opportunity because, like I say, when you label if you labeled as this or you labeled as that, that's what society look at you as. And a lot of times, if your mind, right, if your right. mind ain't strong, you start to look at yourself as the same. Right. They say right. I'm this, so that's what I am. But you have to be stronger than that to say, no, I'm better than that. That's right. I made a mistake. I did this. You know what I'm saying? When I was unaware, you know what I'm saying? Unaware. A lot of people don't realize a lot of crimes are being made because people are unaware that's not the, 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 to, to make any excuses for what you do because you always responsible for what you do right but you can be right. unaware of the consequences you can be unaware of your actions because you moving recklessly you moving frivolously you moving by what somebody else done told you've been right. misinformed right so right. you can do that but that don't have to define you so i can see now in my old age i can see a person's beyond their title Right, See what I'm saying? Right, so I expect right. you to come out here and do good. I expect mm -hmm. you to have a car already in a year and something. I right. expect you to have a job. I expect you to have two jobs if you right. can get them. You right. know what I'm saying? Because I know that you got a drive in you and I know you're bigger than prison. That's right. But you see some dudes in there, you know when they get out what they're going to do. You mm -hmm. know they're going to get hot. That's you know right. they're going to take risks to come back. You know they're going to be in a position where they can be dead today or, or, or alive tomorrow. That's you right. know that That's because right. of the way they live. I don't do drugs. I ain't never done drugs. I made some mistakes in my life when I was young. I'm on a path now trying to get my life back together. I had to pay a hell of a price, 33 years, but I did whatever God told me I had to do. Right. Now I'm out here, I'm gonna try to make the best of my situation. Like right now, I ain't got nothing, but I ain't tripping. Mm -hmm. I got freedom. Man, you got a I got whole family. lot. Yeah, and, you I, got a and, whole lot, man. Yeah, and I ain't worried about it. You probably just ain't aware of uh, what you have. I'm aware of what I got is prices. Do you start seeing what's out here? It's prices. What man, I got right prices, now is prices. Man. That's when, right. Just for me to be able to wake up in the morning and I could go and, and, and see my grandkids or go see my kids or call my mother or get a call from my mother, which I do every day, mm -hmm. that's prices to me. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? My mother couldn't call me for 33 years, man. That's right. My mother called me every day. That's right. That alone is prices. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So you got the, I learned to value the small things, man. That's the one of the big things I see out here that a lot of people... They don't even value the small things. They complain about so many things. But hmm. coming from where we come from, That's right. those complaints would be welcome. That's right. You see what I'm saying? That's so right. I, ain't, I ain't tripping about nothing, man. I'm just going to take every day and try to make my life better. I'm going to try to progress, man. I'm going to try to help some kids don't fall into none of that garbage I fell into. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? And for me, that's cool. You that's know what I'm saying? Right. That's a good that's life right. for me. So. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I ran back into you, man. I'm glad you're doing well. I want to run into some more dudes doing well. Anybody that's within that foolishness, if I run into them, I ain't going to do nothing but try to help. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to do nothing right. but try to help. I'm going to just try to pull them up. You see what I'm saying? Because that's what we need to do in life. Stop trying to put people down when they're already down. Right. Try to help them right. up. Right. See what I'm saying? Because up. you don't know what somebody could be because you can't see the full potential in somebody until you try to bring it out of them. That's or right. until you try to show it to them when they can't see it. That's you see right. what I'm saying? You look at dudes like Tyler Perry, man. Look at the, just at him off he the top of my head. The man was homeless. The man one of the most richest, respected men in America right now. That's right. And he a black man. That's right. Because he believed in himself. So like I say, you don't know what can happen unless you put your mind to it. So like I say, we did 30 some years in prison. For most people, that life is over. That's right. But for That's us, right. it's just beginning. It's just... You know what I'm saying?
<laughs> Joe just beginning, man. man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's right. I'm good, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna keep on striving every day, man, and just let God just bless me. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? So that's I'm all right. right, man. You know okay. what I'm saying? So this is a beautiful thing, man. And uh yeah, I appreciate you coming through, my dude. I appreciate you coming through, yes, man. Yes, sir. And uh we're gonna keep in touch, man. We keep it rolling like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's but every what it time, is. every time you do something positive but every time you do something good or you make a step up man holler at me let me know and okay. then when you do something there's a back step or whatever holler at me let me know that too because then i can tell you to pull yourself up yeah well i'm gonna tell you this man i um you know i'm working every day you know i work off um uh i'm on the sanitation crew i just got me a truck just bought me a truck outright paid forty eight hundred dollars cash for it you know what I mean? That's that's mine. My name on the title, the registration, and all Good of that. Work. You know that's mine. And then I just bought a big old riding lawnmower. The joint got the two things on the back where it hold two trash bags. I got my own pressure washer. You know, I got two weed eaters. You know, I'm just trying to accumulate my tools. You know, so that I can start doing little things. You know, and I, you know, because you know Joe do a lot of do a lot of work man and I'm, I, 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 I asked him about you know the flip house that he got you know if that needed pressure washing anything like that you know he said already you know been pressure washed well but when he he gonna holler at me if he got some work you know what I mean and, and when he do if you ain't doing that at the time man I can use you For sure. I can start building a little crew you know what I mean yeah um, not saying that I'm the boss or this or that. Or, nah, it ain't none of that. It's just that, yeah. man, we helping each other. Yeah, that's we out here helping do. each other, Network, man. man. Network, You know, networking. Yes, sir. Yeah, I feel like, like I say, man, everything will work itself out in time, man. I ain't, I ain't worried about nothing, man. Like I say, what I don't got, I feel like I don't need, man. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's, that's the right. way I look at it, man. But right that's now, right. I'm just happy to be out here, dude. And 100 days? I ain't been out here 100 days, 100 man. 100 days, man. 100 days. I had more smiles on my face than I did in 33 years. That's right. And what, what, that's right. You know, that's priceless, that's right. man. That's right. You ain't got to, you yeah. know, man, you ain't got to worry about this dude or <laughs> that dude or yeah. people you done did yeah. something wrong to. Good night sleeps now, yeah. man. You can lay in, a, right. lay in a real bed on a real pillow, man, to get a good night's sleep for real, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's all good, man. But like I say, man, just keep doing positive, man. Keep doing you, man, and don't don't worry about nothing else, man. You know what I'm saying? Because negative gonna come anyway. Yeah. Just push it to the side. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, man. You know, one of the best things you can do, just coming out here, being you know what I mean, out here a hundred days, is to stay in contact with that man right there. Oh yeah, me and Joe. Stay in talking. contact with Joe, man. Me and Joe had an in-depth conversation today, man. I told Joe, man. I don't, I don't listen to nobody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I listen to people, just like I said earlier, but I process my own information. I take the meat off the plate and leave the other stuff on the side. Right. See what I'm saying? What Joe got going on with somebody else or what somebody else say about Joe or what somebody else say about you, man, or what you got going on with somebody, don't mm -hmm. define that to me. That's right. I'm going to make my own mind up. Yes, you see sir. what I'm saying? Yes, That's sir. what I feel like everybody should do. Don't go by what somebody tell you about somebody. Do your own investigation. Do your own uh, uh, due diligence. How that person act with you? Because I can act one way with you and I can hold another way with you. Right. You right, see what I'm saying? Right. So your That's experience right. with me may not be Joe's experience with me. Right. So Joe been fair with me. Joe been straight up with me. And I'm, I'm going to always be there with Joe because mm -hmm. that's how I am. That's, that's right. what I was just that's telling right. him. I'm a loyal dude. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? You be you be fair to me, I'm going to be fair to you. That's yes, me. Yes, you sir. know that's me. That's right. That's, that's how right. I am. You come at me crooked, I'm going to come at you 10 times quicker. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? But when right. you come straight across the board, that's how I'm coming. You see what I'm saying? And, and that's how I am. Like I say, I, I already know Joe a good dude, man. You know what I'm saying? He done already proved that to me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had no bad dealings with him, man. You know, it's a positive right, but look, experience. But let me stop you right there. Not to correct you on nothing or whatever because, you know, you're your own man or whatever. But I'm going to tell you what I have learned since I've been out here. And I've been out here a year and a two, three months. You know, like you just said, if you come at me straight up, I'm going to come at you straight up. If you come at me cricket, this is where I learned to just not come back. Right. I'm not going to come at you cricket because I ain't going to, you know, it's not in me to come like that. So I'm just not coming at all. Right. You come at me cricket, then you didn't 
cut them ties. Right. That's not the path or that's not where I'm trying to go. You know what I mean? So therefore, I'm not coming back, period. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to go the other way. So that's some that I just that's just little words of wisdom. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Start cause because you said you you gonna come back yeah, tricky. ten times quicker. Ten and what times I mean tricky. by that is just when, don't come back. That's at all. right. That's my mentality though. When you come at me foul, I'm coming back foul. You come at me trying to hurt me, I'm coming at you trying to take you out of here. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? That's just my mentality. If you play fair with me, the bottom line is I'm always gonna play fair. I'm right. never gonna be the first dude. Never gonna be the first dude that they break the trust. I'm mm -hmm. never gonna be the first dude to valley. I'm never mm -hmm. gonna be the first dude to, to, to step out of bounds. That's Cause that's right. not me. That's right. See what I'm saying? That's right. I ain't never been in a relationship that I can think of, regular relationship, friendship, or or, or any type of bondship where I'm the one that broke the trust. Right. I'm right. the one that went foul. I don't that's do that. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's I'm a loyal right. person. So when people come at me crooked, I feel like whatever they get after that, they ask for. They ask for. Because I gave you the real deal. That's you right. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by that. But like I say, I'm just trying to be peaceful out here, man. I'm just trying to live. I'm just trying yeah. to enjoy life. Because you got. And I'm trying to prosper. Because you got family to think about oh, now. Man. You know what I, I got, mean? I got, I got an awesome family. Yeah, you spoke yeah. about your grandkids and all that. So man, somebody, if I wouldn't have had that, I wouldn't even, yeah. I wouldn't even made it through them 33. So when somebody speak, you know, when somebody come at you cricket, you got to think about oh, your yeah. family, most think about down. your grandkids, most and just not come back. Yeah, most definitely. You down. know what I mean? All right, when you came at me cricket, you can have that. You know what I mean? It'll never happen again. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going this way, or I'm going that way. Right. You know what I mean? You can have that. I done learned, I done conquered my pride. You know what I mean? You know, I don't care what you think about me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't care what you say about me or whatever. I'm not gonna allow you to get close to my family. And the re and how you get a person get close to your family is if they come at you cricket and you respond. Oh yeah, yeah. So then you say like you take a man out. You know what I mean? Or you do whatever. Now you putting your family back into a whole different situation. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's an impossibility for yeah. me though. In that aspect, yeah. I yeah. ain't I ain't I ain't gonna hurt nothing these days because I ain't got I ain't got me being ever being in a position where I have to hurt nothing. But yeah, I love life too much, man. You could have gave me one day out of here. It ain't take me but twenty four hours to convince me that I ain't never wanna see no yeah. positive. No, I ain't going to jail. I ain't hmm. put nobody handcuffs on. That's right. I ain't sitting in nobody courtroom or none of that. Ain't none of that in my yeah. future. Hey man, yeah. and I say this in damn near every video I do with Joe. Joe is a winner. You know what I mean? He don't do but help people come up out whatever little situation you know they in. You know, man, Joe he'll give you his man. He'll give Joe didn't even gave me a pair of shorts to put on. Yeah. He didn't gave me a shirt to put on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, but Joe the platform, made sure you yeah. The platform alone, the platform alone is awesome because of the fact that it gives a voice to the voiceless. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The platform alone was 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 brilliant. I ain't even never said this to him personally, but I'm saying it to him now because he's right here. But the platform alone is brilliant, man, because you giving a voice to the voices. It's so mm. many things mm. that happen in there, man, behind them walls, man, this this misconstrued, misunderstood, and misled by the public, man, that people don't even know. That's so right. when you get to talk to somebody or somebody get a chance to, to push their voice out there, the people that can hear these things and understand these things, it's one thing to hear them, but you got to understand them. You got to understand why life is the way it is in there, mm. why people have to. We are forced to live this way. Mm -hmm. And most of society don't even know that. But you forced to live that way. So anybody who can prevail and can come up out of there and can come up out of there with some common sense or, or, or half a brain, man, you should you should you should respect them, man, and, and, and try to help them any way you could. Because they went through hell to get up out here. That's you can right. believe that. And a lot of people won't even get a chance to even put that out there to the world if it don't be for situations like after prison show. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And it came to me organically. Right, you know what I'm saying? It right. just came to me organically, so I know it was meant to be. That's so right. that's why I say when I get negative, say, well, this, that, and third, okay, well, I ain't got none of that yet. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. coming from y'all. I ain't got none of that coming from this. That's right. See what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't listen to that. I listen to what my instincts tell me. And I survived on my instincts for 33 years in prison. That's right. Where a that's lot of right. dudes didn't. 
So That's I right. listen to my instincts. So like I say, the platform alone, man, is, is, is a beautiful thing. And just to hear the after prison show. So people subscribe to that because people want to know what it's like in prison for real. Not what society mm. tells you, mm. but what's for real. That's so right. when you subscribe to this show, man, that's what you're getting. You're getting the inside scoop on what really happens on the inside of them prison walls. And I can talk to you forever. Right. Because I got 33 years of my stories and I got 33 years of things I've actually seen. But if I tell you something that I've experienced, I've actually experienced. But I can tell you 33 years of things I've seen. Mm. So you're talking about an infinite amount of things. I've been in prison over 12, 12,000 days, man. That's right. That's you see right. what I'm saying? 12,000 right. days. And man, and now you out here, you know what I mean? You out here, you, you're doing well, you're looking well. And I'm glad that, you know what I mean, had this opportunity, man, to, you know, meet with you out here, stutter in there. Oh, for you know, sure. It's a good reunion, man, and all this is thanks to Joe. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? No, no doubt. I, I, I had much love for you in there, and I got much love yeah, for you out here, sure. too, man. Yeah, sure. if, if I can help you in any kind yeah. of way, man, you know, just, yeah. you know, you got yeah, my yeah, number. Man. I'm gonna you keep know, it, call I'm gonna me, keep man. I'm going to keep it pushing, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be all right, and I already know that everything coming time, man. I ain't worrying about nothing, man. Like I say, I'm going to... I get it on, you know what I'm That's saying? Right. As, as time go on, I'll be all right. But like I say, right now, I'm, I'm cool with the fact that I'm just free. Right. See what I'm saying? That's I'm just right. free. Like I say, over 12,000 plus days in there, less than 100 out here, I take the 100 any day. Mm -hmm. I take the 100 any day. Man. That's right. That's right. Real quick, uh, as we wrap this up, hey, man, really appreciate the, the kind words you guys both were saying. It's an absolute pleasure to be able to showcase this reunion to kind of facilitate helping put this thing together and to have you guys share what you guys have shared and to know each other from where you guys know each other. And I'm truly hopeful uh, that there's gonna be a lot more to come with this. Right, Absolutely. yeah.